Today we want to uh, just honor our fathers, man, uh, you know, the godly men in our life or men in our life who have influenced us to be better men, better women, better people. So today, if you're a father, I'm asking if we would to stand. We want to recognize you. If you're a father today, would you stand with me? Ben, don't you stand up. All right, fathers, I want to play a video for us while we're standing here in honor of our fathers today. Thank you, fathers. <clears throat> you know, there's nothing quite like a godly dad. It's, it's really not. To have someone that truly tries to be what Jesus has called them to be. What do you think of when you hear the word father? Unfortunately, for many of our children today, when they hear the word father, it's not a pleasant thought. I'm going to ask you if you would to turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. 
In Ephesians chapter 6, I'm just going to read one verse. And I'm going to read verse 4. In Ephesians 6 verse 4 says this, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. You know, one of the things that's changed the most in my culture today, in my lifetime, in our culture, in our society today, and in my lifetime has been the role of men in our family and society. What seems to happen is that we find more and more single moms raising their kids by themselves and dad having very little to do in the lives of their children. And we find many times that dads are not the stabilizing influence in the life of a child that he should be and that he's called to be and that he's actually ordained by God to be. We find the instead the emasculating of men in our society, the feminizing of men in our society. And men are no longer taking the active role of godly and spiritual leader in the home and in our country today. And what we have produced is generation of young men now that are angry, that are frustrated about how life is turning out. There seems to be among our young men a seething anger and deep frustration that leads them many times to abuse alcohol and drugs, dropping out of life, quitting on the marriage, quitting on their family. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, uh, 32, verse 18, there's a scripture that's also repeated in Exodus that basically says in Jeremiah 18, uh, 32, 18, you show love to thousands but bring the punishment for the parents' sins into the laps of their children after them, great and mighty God, whose name is Lord Almighty. It could very well be the sins of the parents passed on from generation to generation. And how often we see that the men of our culture today are simply inheriting that which was passed on to them, this anger. You see, the reality of it is this, that men are ordained by God, called by God to be the spiritual leader of the household. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, in the verses we read, it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. And you see, that word exasperate means to make them angry, to frustrate them. And I wonder how many of you today are frustrated by your fathers. Maybe you always felt like around your father you were never quite good enough. Or maybe you felt like you could never do anything right. Or maybe you felt unwanted or unneeded or insignificant. And unfortunately, this sin is passed on from generation to generation. Fathers passing on this frustration, this emptiness, this disappointment, and this anger to their children and to their children's children. Today, there are many, so many young men and women walking around still looking for affirmation from their fathers, from men who were supposed to be their fathers. You see, for when a child does not receive the love and approval of a male father in his life, it leaves a void, it leaves an emptiness, because that's not the way God created it. That's not the way God ordained it. You see, I believe that many of us here today have experienced the very thing I'm talking about right now. Because we do not have... We did not have a responsible man we could call daddy. We struggled throughout our life trying to figure out what it really means to be a man. Wondering whether we had what it takes to even be one. Now this morning I want to congratulate and applaud the many hardworking single mothers out there who did such a great job. But there's a lot of things a mother cannot teach a boy that only a father can teach him. You see, a woman cannot teach a boy how to be a man. And a woman cannot teach a young girl what a loving husband should look like. Only a father can do that. Fathers make a difference in the lives of their children. 
And if we are going to make a positive difference in the life of our child, then we must have a voice in the life of our children. I've often said that the only hope for America today is revival in the church. And the problem with America today is our churches aren't doing what God has called them to do and we're not becoming and being what God has called us to become and be. But before we can solve the problem in the church, we got to solve the problem in the family because the family came before the church. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. He created family. He instituted family. And I believe the great problems that we're seeing in America today can be traced right back to the family. Whether it be crime, whether it be drugs, whether it be education, it goes back to the family. And let's put it where the problem really lies. It lies in the dads. It lies in the men of our culture today, in our society. We need dads to be the men that God has called them to be. Today, men, we need to rise up once again. And we need to verbalize to our children affirmation. You see, I believe one of the most important things a father can do is understand the power of his words. The Jesus says that by our words we'll be justified, by our words we will be condemned. You see, there's a power in words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And every time a dad speaks, he either speaks life or he speaks death. And we don't need to miss that. Do you realize in the, in the New Testament, I actually looked it up last night. In the New Testament, God only speaks audibly three times. And one time he's quoted. So I'm going to read you those scriptures where God actually speaks audibly in the New Testament. One time is found in John chapter 12, verse 28. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again, talking about Jesus. And Jesus quotes Matthew 12, verse 18, when he's quoting the Old Testament, when Jesus says, here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. Now I want to read you the other times that God speaks audibly in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 3, after the baptism of Jesus, verse 16 and 17, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw a spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. In Matthew verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 5, when Peter, James, and John are taken up on the mountain and Jesus is transfigured before them, Peter makes a statement and then God speaks and it says in Matthew 17, verse 5, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered him and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. You see, God rarely spoke in the New Testament audibly. And yet... The three times that God actually spoke was to affirm his son. The three times he spoke was to affirm Jesus. You see, if God, the perfect father, speaks affirmation to his son, how much more should we as earthly fathers affirm our wives and our children? You see, when a dad is involved, the children know he is present because he speaks to them. And he must speak words that affirm. Now, how do we speak words that affirm? Well, first of all, we need to communicate a sense of belonging, a sense of close relationship. Notice the first thing that God said. This is whose son? My son. This is my son. How do we speak words that affirm? We communicate a sense of belonging. These are words that move the heart of a child, put a smile on their face, be it a boy or a girl, to hear the words that gives children a sense of belonging. You are mine. You're my son. You're my daughter. And when we communicate words of approval and belonging to our children, the young boy no longer has to look to a gang leader to tell him who he is or whether or not he's important. You're my son. That by itself makes you special. You're all mine. You see, when a man speaks to his daughter, 
and lets her know that she is his, that she is precious to him. She doesn't have to look for another man to give her affirmation. She doesn't have to seek out the approval of someone else who may exploit her or abuse her or take advantage of her or sexually uses her, maybe beats her up and dumps her as he looks for the next one in the same shoe. And I believe the reason that women today are, are open to abuse and sexual abuse is many times because they didn't have a father that affirmed them and let them know how special they were in his sight. I remember one time when my daughter was very little, I was probably about five, six years old, she didn't know I was standing outside her door as her and her little brother were in the room playing. And I heard her saying to her brother, my daddy calls me princess. What does he call you? I wanted to say not here, but I didn't know, you know. But see, that meant something to her. That daddy called her princess. My granddaughter now, she comes up, she comes, almost every time I see her, she comes up to me and she says, Hey, buddy, am I still your buddy? And she wants to know that she's my buddy, you know? I affirm her with my words. Words are so important. Maybe you are here today and you're seeking healing from a father who ignored you or never recognized you as his own, as though you belong to him. I want to tell you that if your earthly father didn't, there's a heavenly father that does. That's the song they sang in the praise, the first praise song we sang this morning. You are a child of God. You're special in the sight of God. God calls you his own. You are his. I find so many today who are bitter and angry. And I come to tell you that even if your earthly father did not give you the things that you need and the affirmation that you need, there's forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And you may have never heard these words from your earthly father, but you can hear it from the heavenly father that he loves you and that he cares for you. Often when we do not get the love and approval from our earthly father, it's hard to imagine that our heavenly father cares for us. Many times we relate the heaven, to the Heavenly Father like we related to our earthly father. If we didn't seem to ever please our earthly father, then we wonder, can we ever please our Heavenly Father? If our earthly father abandoned us, then we look at God. God's going to abandon us in our times of trouble. But God's not like the earthly father. God's the perfect father. God doesn't strive to be like man. Man should strive to be like God. We should try to emulate him as the father, the father that affirms. Secondly, we must convey to our children that they have value and that they are special. They have worth. God said, you are my beloved son. What does that mean? It says, you are the son that I love. If children are going to know that they are important and have worth, then they need to know that they are loved. They need to be told that they are loved. You know, too often times, especially a generation before mine, the dads didn't like to use that word love, you know? Dads like to say, well, you know I love you because I get up and I go to work every day, you know? They sort of sort of did a living love sort of thing. And, and it's sad because so many of us of my generation, we crave that word, those words, that affirmation. You know, I can remember the times in my life. Now, my dad's done a lot better. Trust me, my dad's a good man. But I can remember the times in my life, and he's gotten a much more frequent about it in his older age, Brian. But, but I can remember the times in my life that my dad said, I love you. You know, that he actually used those words, I love you. And, and I can remember how those words, what those words meant to me. I can remember how I just took them in and absorbed them into my heart and soul like a sponge. We need to know that we are loved. A, a large percentage of children today don't live in the same home as their fathers. But that should not prevent the fathers from interacting with their children and letting their children know that they are loved by them. Let's think of it this way. God and Jesus didn't live in the same house for a while. The Father was in heaven, and Jesus was on earth. And so what did God do? God, in an audible voice, 
affirmed his son. You are my loved son. I love you. I love you. Fathers, we don't know what kind of world our children are living in. And we need to take the time out to let them know that we love them. Because there are many temptations and challenges out there for them. In all three temptations of Christ, they all occur in the, in the Gospels. And the temptations of Christ recorded in all the Gospels, they occur after the baptism of Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit drives them out into the desert. But it's after God has said those words, you are my beloved son. After that point, he's tempted by Satan. Do you remember what the first words of Satan were to Jesus? If you are the son of God. Now God had just told him, you are my son. You see, many voices will compete for your children's attention. But if they have heard the voice of a loving father before, no other competing voices will throw them off course. Each time Jesus heard Satan say, if you are the son, he was able to refer back to the relationship and the affirmation of God, his father. We as fathers must affirm our children so when they are in the desert with the wild animals, those affirming words of the father... Let them know how special that they are and how they are loved. Fathers must speak words that convey to them that they have value and worth. Let them know. Let your child know every day that they are special and that they are loved. Thirdly, we must convey to our children that we are pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You bring me pleasure. It's what God say. You bring me pleasure. I love watching you. You ever have been around small children lately? Man, watch me. Watch me, Daddy. Watch me do this. Watch me turn this flip. Watch me swing. Watch me sing. What are they looking for? What are they wanting, really? They're wanting your affirmation. They want to please you, aren't they? They want to please you. Man, I have all kinds of beautiful artistic work from kindergartners at my school. Man, they'll color. And then they want to come in at, at, when I'm at car duty and they want to hand me this picture. They, they, they've colored. Now, one time I used to just take those things and as soon as I'd walk off, I'd wad them up and throw them in a trash can. Then I began to realize that they didn't have no money. They was giving me what they had, you know? So I kept it around at least for a little while and hung it on my wall because that's special. They wanted me to affirm them. They wanted to know that they, that they were special and they wanted to bring me pleasure. They wanted to please me. You see, children want to know that the father that they please their father. And we as fathers need to say to our children, I'm proud of you. I'm proud. You bring me pleasure because you are my child. We need to use kind and affirming words because kind and affirming words are great tools in the hands of a father. And when we are careless and not thoughtful in our choice of words, we anger and discourage our children. And if we're not careful, they begin to look for affirmation from the wrong people. You see, we need to let our children know that they bring us pleasure. Not just when they bring home straight A's. Or not just when they hit the game-winning home run. But we need to let them know, let our children know that they are special and they bring us pleasure for no other reason than they are our, our kids. They're from us. They are, they are a part of us. And we should affirm them, not because of what they do, but because of whose they are. They're mine. You're my child. And God was saying to Jesus, I love you. You are my son. And because you are my son, that brings me pleasure. 
too often times life slips by so quickly and we just don't take the time to realize it, do we? Some of you get so sick of your kids. <laughs> you do. I know, I was there. I'm not perfect. I definitely wasn't a perfect father. I, was, I got so many regrets. Biggest regrets in my life are how I've handled my kids. That's the truth. Biggest regrets I got in my life. But you know, we, uh, even though I regret that, I can, I, I can try to make up for it today. But let me say this to you dads, moms, this season goes by very quickly. Very quickly. I'm looking over here today at my youngest son who's 22 now, right? 22? 22. Wow. Wow. Went by so quick. It'll be over before you know it. You better look at them. You better hold them. Daddies, you better pull them girls up in your lap. You better kiss their cheek. You know, it's so crazy how dads are, man. Dads, when those little girls are little, you know, they're daddy's girls, and they know it. Daddy's pulling them up in their lap, stroking their hair, kissing them, telling them how much they love them. Then all of a sudden, these little girls develop breasts, and daddy don't know what to do. Guess what? They're little girls in women's bodies. And these girls still need the affirmation of the father. They still need to be told how much they're loved. And how much the father pleases, how much they're pleased, the father's pleased by them. You see, fathers, once we speak words over our kids, we can't take them back, whether they're good or whether they're bad. So we need to get in the habit of speaking good words over our children, of blessing our children. When you look through the Old Testament, you see it happening over and over again. Fathers blessing their children. And how do they do that? The Bible gives us ways and, and, and the ways fathers bless the kids. They came up and they laid hands on their kids and they blessed their children. And they let their children know how special they were to them. They affirmed the dignity and the specialness of their own child. It makes all the difference in the world. And lastly is this. We affirm our children when we encourage them to do what is godly and what is right. You know, it's one thing to say, do as I say, not as I do. It's another thing to actually live what you're saying. The best way we can influence our children is to live it in front of them. To show them how to love their mother. You know, I've heard it said before that the best way a father can show that he loves his kid is by loving his mother. Because what better illustration of safety and protectiveness and stability in a child's life than a father loving his wife, loving the child's mother. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. You see, fathers, it's your responsibility. It doesn't say mothers. It says fathers. It's your responsibility to bring up your child in the way of the Lord. It is your responsibility to lead your child to Jesus. By your words and by your life. It is our job as, as dads to challenge our children to walk in the straight and the narrow. Challenge them to accept our faith and beliefs and values. Challenge them by modeling godly behavior in front of them. Challenge them to move to another level in their praise and worship of God. Challenge them to live worthy of a calling in which they have been called. Challenge them to become involved in the church and in the things that matter to God. Challenge them to cultivate a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ by loving God and loving their neighbor. Challenge them to read their Bibles and to pray and to get to go to church. Challenge them to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. Now I'm going to read you an astounding statistic. Fathers, listen to this. When a father is saved and involved in the religious instruction of a child's life, 92% of their children become Christian. 
Nine out of ten. The most influential thing in a child becoming a Christian is the father, not the mother, not the preacher, not the Sunday school teacher, the father. Nine out of ten children follow in the father's footsteps. It is your responsibility, your responsibility, Father, to lead your child to the Lord. Now, as I do this message and preach this message this morning, maybe there are some of you today that regret you never had a father that affirmed you. I want to remind you of what Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 says. Because you are his sons, God sent you the spirit of his son into our heart and the spirit who calls out Abba Father. Now that word Abba actually means daddy. You see, because there's a difference between a father and a daddy. Any man can father a kid. But it takes more than a, that to be a daddy, doesn't it? And God says here, not only am I your father, I'm your daddy. And our spirits cry out, daddy. Daddy's a safe word, isn't it? It's a place that you can crawl up in his lap and know that you're safe, that you're loved, that you're secure. Now, I got a, two parts of the invitation this morning. First of all, I want to invite men today who want to start affirming their children, who want to affirm their children and appreciate their children and be the dad, the father that God has called you to be. And I invite you this morning, by the grace of God, to commit to do that. And also, I invite you who are fatherless this morning to let God be your father. God's a good, good father. He invites you this morning, if you didn't get all these things from your dad, he invites you this morning to crawl up into his lap and to let him love you and to let him be your father, to affirm you because you are his child and he is your Abba. So I invite you this morning to just look past the sins of your father the best you can and try to forgive him. And just let God be the father to the fatherless this morning. Would you stand with me?